here's something I have to ask you. In the Vietnamese community, rapping is very different. Right. It's not something big. <coughs> in other, com you know, American community, it's all about rapping and other things. But in the Vietnamese community, it's all about singing the classic songs, all the, you know, tradition songs. But how is it when you tell people you're Vietnamese and you rap? Is it hard for you? Um, Do you get judged by other people? Yes. Judge, uh, I mean, everyone gets judged, right? Yeah, but especially if you're Vietnamese and you rap, do people think like they would, you know, depreciate to you? They would like Absolutely. kind of lower your value Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Um, I decided to turn my biggest weakness into my greatest strength. So how do you do that? Well, um, by just being, by having skills. I see. When, when I was young, my dad told me, uh, you might be the first Vietnamese person that people meet because I didn't grow up in, you know, little Saigon. Mm -hmm. So he's like, so... You have, so, you know, you have to carry yourself in a way that will make our people proud. And one of the ways that he did that was uh, he made sure I knew how to speak English 100% properly and correctly. Right. And um, th uh, that's, that's one way that you can get people to stop judging you. In the world of hip-hop, uh, when I first started rapping, I was a, a, a battle rapper. I would, battle, I would rap against Nguyen Cap. Oh. And I was like the only Nguyen doing it. And it was, uh, it was in the South Bay of L.A. at the time. I see. And uh, everyone would be like, you know, make Joe, oh, you eat dogs, you know, blah, blah. <laughs> they would do all that kind of stuff, you know? And then the well, only thing I can do is just beat them. Wow. The only, beat only them I'm, with the, the rapping. With the rapping, with the right? rapping, you know. <laughs> okay. If it comes down to it, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's what I did, you know? I, I, I got my respect by, uh, you know, I was, a, I was, at the time I was, this is after my knee injury, I was a 15 year old Asian kid. And uh, I was, I'm not that cool now, but I was, I was even way less cool back then. Amazing. Glasses, like, just no style at all. It's fine, you can wrap um, your glasses on. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I wasn't scared. I just kept battling people. And when I first started, everyone was like, what? Who's this? Right. Then after, after a while, people started coming over to me and be like, hey, man, you're tired, you're dope, blah, blah, blah. And pretty soon, people just gave me respect because I, I took it from them. Right. Wow. À, vừa rồi Chelsea có hỏi uh, có nói với đặng là mình trong cái người Việt Nam của mình trong cái 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 community mình là cộng đồng của mình khi mà mình nghĩ tới chữ rap thì mình nghĩ chứ là một cái mà người Mỹ thì chữ thề hay là dùng mấy cái từ mà mình không thích nghe khi mà rap nhưng mà ở đây Chelsea có thấy là đặng là một người trong những người số Việt Nam của mình ít lắm để mà uh, đi theo con đường rap thì hồi nãy Chelsea có hỏi đặng là khi mà mình rap gì mình có bị người ta dòm ngó tới mình người ta dùng ánh mắt mà kỳ thị mình khi mình là người Việt Nam mà mình rap thì đặng đang nói cũng có nhưng mà bản thân của đặng là uh, chứng tỏ cho người ta bằng cái sở trường của mình và bằng cái năng khiếu của mình thì ở đây rất là đặc biệt và đặng you mentioned about your dad có nói ba của đặng có nói một câu là tại xưa là đặng ở uh, không phải ở nước mỹ của mình mà no where did you live it was, it was, it was in LA in LA ở LA thì ít người Việt Nam thì ba đặng có nói là đặng sẽ là một người một có thể là một, một người đầu tiên khi mà người ta gặp là người Việt Nam của mình cho nên mình phải làm một cái nào đó để mà cho mình ấn tượng cho người ta mà người ta không khinh khi mình là mình học phải giỏi nhất là tiếng anh của mình and that's, that's that's a very good advice because people judge. I don't know about you guys, but let's let's be honest. When you first see an Asian guy who raps, what do you think? As, <laughs> I mean, before he raps, do you be honest. Nothing. Well, I, I I just think of the last Asian battle rapper I can think of, which was what's what's like dude's name? Jin. 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 Yeah. And uh, I just remember how t uh, unfortunately not good he was, but then to hear Dang rap. And he he's speaking stuff that's like more woke than some of these you know right. rappers from my community, and I, I'm like very moved by it, you know, because I I start to see like because hip hop, it started of a of a voice of oppression, right. you know, it was it, you know started from our community, and it was because our community was going through so much, so it was a voice of oppression, it was a voice speaking out, mm -hmm. you know, so I always look at hip hop as the voice of that generation, right, you know, so to see that that's true not just for my community but for someone who comes from an Asian community, someone who comes from a Caucasian community, mm -hmm. me who is black and white, who comes from, you know, that kind of experience both, I can see that hip hop is one thing that unites us versus skin color, right. versus race, versus background. Right, wow, amazing. So I, this is a key for me to a key points. I have to say something. Vừa rồi Chelsea có hỏi đây, bạn tough này, họ nghĩ sao về khi mà thấy người Việt Nam của mình là người rap, cái đầu tiên của mình, cái cánh mắt nhìn mình, mình sẽ nghĩ như thế nào? Thì ở đây, Tập có nói là khi mình coi người khác là Asian, like what kind of Asian, like in general, like người Á Châu của mình rap thì thấy là không hay nhưng mà khi mà nghe tới đặng đi rap thì 
một cái mà ấn tượng rất là ấn tượng vì thấy he changed the way you think right totally. cái cách mà suy nghĩ khác nhau thì thấy là đặng này rap rất là hay và những cái từ mà dùng mà cái cách mà rap ấy làm cho người ta um, để ý tới một cách mà rất là like, like very what, professional or very how is it he attracts you in a, in a certain way like I, the first time I heard uh, Dang spit was uh, uh, my homeboy Shofu had did a song with him and he had just came in with a scarf on you know looking like a nerd I was just like he was like this is the guy who's gonna be on the song with you and then I, I didn't expect nothing of it and then he hopped on the track and I was just like I listened like because he had other people that was on right. it too that they were they were good too but um when Dang got in the booth and he started spinning I, I was like it made me like I listened you know and it made me not judge Right. You know, it made me realize, like I said, like this is really a voice of the people. Like to him, when I looked at him, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't relate to him. Like he wasn't someone I could relate to. He wasn't someone that I can ever get something from. But even though we come from different cultures and we couldn't relate to right. each other through music, we were able to relate. And I heard that right away when he started spinning. Wow. Did you, do you when you rap those lyrics or those stories you had? Is it from your own real story, or how do you actually come up with those inspiring stories? Um. Uh, there's a quote from uh, one of my, uh, William Faulkner, I believe. He says, uh, "No tears in the author, no tears in the reader." Meaning, khi nào mình làm like nhạc or viết cái gì, nếu cái cái đó là không thiệt, thì người ta sẽ biết. Thì nếu nếu tôi like a lot of rappers, they they like they uh, like make believe. They they make up their lives and they rap about oh, a bunch of fake real? stuff, you know. And they and they get people to think that oh, right. I'm a guy with 20 cars. Oh. And I've killed a million people. Oh, okay. When the, when the guy's just some regular dude from the valley or whatever. Yes. Uh, for me, I want people to like you know right now you know, what you're saying is this is me, you know. Uh, so if I'm playing a character, if if Ginyak go go toy la không thể, thì there's gonna be a moment where người ta sẽ thấy. And uh, one thing about me is I just want to be real. Right. I want to be able to do an interview and be like, right. This is me. Um, Chelsea có hỏi đặng đây là khi mà làm mấy cái nhạc đó rồi mấy cái lời mấy cái từ đó là từ cốt truyện thực của mình hay là tự nghĩ đâu rồi viết theo giống như bị chuyện vậy đó thì đặng có nói là có một cuốn sách tên là No Tears No Tears in the Author No Tears in the Reader No Tears in the Author No Tears in the Reader là không có nước mắt cho cái người viết và không có nước mắt cho người đọc um, thì đặng có nói là khi mà mình làm cái chuyện gì mà nó không có đúng á hay là nó không phải thật á thì cái người đọc cũng sẽ biết được thì ở đây là những cốt truyện này là đều theo từ from your heart từ cái tâm viết ra hết and um, since we don't have enough time and I I'm, I'm, thank you so much but first before that I want to each of you guys to have a message to the audience or whoever if you're inspired by rapping especially us in the Vietnamese community okay yeah thì I Chelsea guess có nói là để cho những anh đây gửi lời nhắn cho đến quý vị và những người mà thích thú và đam mê với anh nhành âm nhạc và của rap um, thì uh, nếu có uh, bố mẹ I mean like not bố mẹ của tôi nhưng mà parents out there có um, uh, like the that tick làm nhạc tick tick viết bài uh, viết bài tick làm cái gì uh, with art then um that be I said don't say this in English this go ahead yeah, English, English. Fine. okay uh because I teach and I and I deal with a lot of students and I deal with parents and whatnot one thing I've noticed especially in our community is that uh, creativity seems like to me at an all-time low mm-hmm. and a lot of kids uh, aren't able to think on their own very well aren't able to form their own opinions and and, and care about care about things mm-hmm. um, and I think uh, part of it sometimes is because our parent parents can encourage their kids to be that way uh, the message that I want to say is that if there are any parents out there who have kids that are involved in art don't discourage it um, for, for me uh, art and music and has been the best one of the best things that ever happened to my life and opened up a world of possibilities to not only change my life but to change the lives of others mm-hmm. um, um, but in our community, sometimes people look at hip hop or music or anything as like a distraction. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't always have to be the case. Right. And I did I did finish college, so you can still <laughs> go to school and do all this stuff at the same time. Thank you. How about you? <coughs> um, I would just say like for like kids that are adopted or been through foster care, just not to give up. There's like a way and a, like a way out always. And there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and just keep fighting. That's pretty much it. That's right. the one I want to push out for sure. Thank you. Um, I, I guess the, the strongest message I can give or based on the experiences I've had, the greatest gift that I've learned through life was is, is that whatever your passion is, whatever it is that y- 
you feel strong about what you've learned through life? Is it from your parents? Is it from maybe the music you listen to, whatever? Whatever that you've learned and experienced and are putting into practice as a skill, as a hobby, whatever. And it's building up your positivity. It's building up your happiness. Continue for it. You know, we're, we get lost on trying to fulfill maybe a status quo or trying to be something that other people want us to be. But I think, unfortunately, now is the time, especially with social media and all this, you know, our personalities can be vocalized to the whole world. We need to find out what's special about ourselves and allow the world to see that. Because you not being yourself might be hurting the world. So that's Come on. Thank you guys. And cảm ơn quý vị đã đón xem chương trình và quý vị cũng đã nghe qua uh, mình theo đuổi đam mê mình dù cho nó là nghề nghiệp như gì nhưng mà một cái đam mê của mình nó có thể thay đổi một cái tất cả và có thể giúp cho xã hội thì rất là quý giá và cho sự cảm ơn quý vị và đón chào xong chương trình kỳ sau.